2013. Honourable Member <coughs> Graff, Thank you, Mr President. I would like to ask the Minister for Education, Sport and Culture if he will review the catchment policy for rural schools. Well, on the Minister to reply, <coughs> Dr Allenson. Thank you, Mr President. The Department does not have a catchment policy as such, but catchment areas are covered in the admissions policy for individual schools. The Department reviews these catchment areas on a, on a yearly basis, as we are aware that some rural schools are based in areas where the age profiles of the community have changed and the numbers enrolling in some rural schools seem to be decreasing. The Department's policy is to manage catchment areas to ensure that rural schools remain viable. Thank you. Supplementary, Mrs. Kane. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I thank the Minister for that response, but I would say to him that given the 30% decline over the past 10 years in the population of the Isle of Man, a 30% corresponding decline in a, in a rural school's population can make the the school role so small as to impact on pastoral and other activities undertaken by the school and would he see benefit perhaps in allowing um, a free catchment area for rural schools to enable a little bit of movement even a boost of a small number of extra students would make a large impact and does he see a value of rural schools remaining in the communities? Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, first of all, I'd like to argue against the um, honourable member's assertion that the Ottoman population has decreased by 30 per cent. I don't think that was quite what, what you meant. Um, but, but I take her point that, that actually um, decreasing um, numbers of young children coming into certain rural schools may be a threat to those schools. However, catchment areas can be used to protect a rural school. Um, also, catchment areas can be used in um, urban areas to try to balance pupils and facilities and prevent overcrowding or underutilisation. So I do think they, ha they have a role. However, what I would like to say to the Honourable Member is the, Depart the Department has no policy to close rural schools and wants to work with those teachers to maximise the um, facilities they can provide to the local communities. And personally, I will be going around all the schools in the Isle particularly the rural schools, to ask for those head teachers' views. Thank you, Mr. President. Honourable Member Miss Edge. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to ask the Minister. You said that um, the admissions policy and that rural schools remain, if, they're, they're, if they remain viable. So, if they're not viable, what is the Minister going to do? Minister to reply. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President. My, the exact words I said was that the Department's policy is to manage catchment areas to ensure that rural schools remain viable. Thank you. Member, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, would the Minister not agree that uh, people from certain areas can make an outer catchment request to a rural school? Minister to reply. I, thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for, for pointing that out. Again, flexibility and local discretion is extremely important for the Department for Education, Sport and Culture. Honourable Member, Mr. Baker. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Minister for his clear commitment there that the Department has no policy to close rural schools. Um, <coughs> and would he agree with me that, school, that schools play a very special and integral role in village communities and, and are essential to a healthy rural environment? Minister. Thank you very much, Mr President. I would completely agree with the Honourable Member for um, Aaron Michael that some of our rural schools are actually the foundations of their local communities. Honourable Member, final supplementary, Ms Edge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to ask the Minister. Um, obviously, you, got, you said you, you'll manage them to make sure they're more viable. What type of management is this going to be? Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. President. That management is flexibility in listening to the local head teachers and the local communities to make sure we achieve the best outcomes for those local schools. I'll give a f further opportunity to the original questioner, Ms. Kane. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, a couple of points, please, for the Minister. Um, he says there's flexibility and discretion on the catchment areas for outer catchment requests, but under the, the Education Bill it's proposed that they would be legally enforceable. So are there any plans to uh, remove that provision? And also, um, is he aware that a school in Douglas, St Thomas's Church of England School, is actually promoting smaller class sizes and a nurturing environment? Is it right that a school should be promoting smaller ca class sizes that has an all-island catchment? Minister to reply. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I mean, in terms of the flexibility and the um, parts of the, of the education board, which received its first 
reading. Certainly that's something the, the Education Department is looking into to make sure that those stipulations, that, that enabling power is aimed in the best direction of the education ser service. In terms of St Thomas's School, I'm not aware of um, her comments and, and what she's alleging the school may be doing, but if you perhaps like to give me um, some of the complaints from local um, parents in this school, there's children there, I'd be more than happy to take those up.